This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York City. And here I am ladies and gentlemen, how do you like me? Do I look okay? Do I look healthy today? I, I guess I am, I don't know, I have no idea. Well, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second, I haven't, I haven't put you on your picture on yet, don't talk yet. Oh, yeah, don't, no, don't talk yet. Now you can talk. Okay, oh, now they can hey, see you. What? It's Thursday, and uh, how how has your week been? Why, why do you ask that? Well, uh, because, you know, I catch uh, snippets of your show, but, uh, you know, there's many other things that go on during oh, your week. Last and... night we had a great show. It was a good show last night. Yeah. Got a lot of, got a lot of listeners. Yeah, yeah. I... I tuned in when I got back uh, and uh, for a few minutes I could see mm -hmm. uh, that it was 44. 44? Was it up that high last night? Yeah, yeah. Should be uh, thousands, I, but it's not. Well, uh, you know, do a little bit of Facebook marketing, maybe. Oh, fuck it. You know. Yeah, I mean, so few people listen to this thing every night that I'm beginning to give up on it. You know? It's practice for Monday. It's, it's practice for Monday. Monday's doing okay. It's not doing as great as it was, but it's still doing very good. But yeah. uh, uh, got a lot. What did I do? The other day, I went on Facebook, right? I'm out in the park, and I just talked for about 15 minutes, and that was it. Got over yeah. 600 people viewed it. Wow. You know? I mean, what am I doing, you know, doing an hour and a half, three nights a week, and an hour on Mondays? Well, you know, it that seems to be the way that uh, the internet works. That you're, you're wrong. Podcasts... You're wrong. You're wrong. Joe Rogan does a three-hour show. Yeah, but Joe Rogan gets what a forty-five million dollar contract. Hundred million. Uh, hundred million. Hundred million. Yeah. I mean, where do they come up with these numbers? I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. This week, uh, I. Went to, I, I thought about buying this townhouse and I got cold feet at the last minute. And because uh, they, they, it started a bidding war, and I just said, I, I'm not going to get involved. Well, don't get in a bidding war. No, that, that, that really, to begin with, there's probably no bidding war at all. They're just trying to get the price up. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Well, yeah. anyway, they're somebody, not allowed to do that, but they do it. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I know they do it. And, and uh, you know, my real estate agent said, Oh, it's marketing. I, I said that's not marketing. There's no ethics. You know where where are the ethics? You 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 list a place. Uh, you know if somebody wants to bid a little bit over, but you know you got multiple people going. Well, you the say it's it's gonna it it's worth this much, and then yeah. you say okay, I'm willing to pay it. And then they say, but there are other people bidding on it. Right. Well, wait a minute. Then why did you offer me it to me at that price? You know exactly. That's why I felt it wasn't ethical. So anyway, I, I thought about it, and then the next next morning, I called the agent and I said, uh, you know, what happened? She says, well, they accepted uh, the offer or the other person's offer, and I said, well, why don't you put in a backup offer? So I, I raised it five grand because I knew what their offer was and what was accepted. So I raised the offer five grand, and I said, uh, make it a backup offer. And why, I said, why do you need the townhouse? Uh, I, I want a, I want a two car garage, uh, you know. I, well, I, it's an awful, uh, awful lot to spend on a two car garage. Well, yeah, it feels that way. Uh, you know, I'm I'm looking at the lower end of the market here. Uh, so this one was listed for five nine five. They accepted a six thirty, mm -hmm. and so I came in the next morning and I gave a backup offer of six thirty five. Yeah, and I and so I said. She, you know, my agent said, you know, these things come on and off the market all the time. What happens? People make a bid and then they don't qualify. 
or uh, and and this one had contingencies the uh, the people that got the bid mm -hmm. uh, and it's just because I decided I didn't want to play that game right. but then I thought about it and said that I don't want to commute over uh, you know a, a lot further this is a very convenient commute and uh, it's got open space and it's it's just peaceful and quiet and I don't have anybody on top of me you see you're lucky you're on the eighth floor the only thing you got on top of you is pigeons on the roof yeah, there's very little noise up there. There is noise over on this side because uh, yeah. years ago, I believe this apartment, this is what we call our office, and it's the only room that's different than all the others. You know, they're pretty mm -hmm. much kind of rectangular, but this is almost a tube. You yeah. know, it's, it's much longer than it is wider. And yeah. I think what happened is this entire wall that I'm looking at, you folks can't see it, wasn't there at one point. So they put up that wall, and the wall yeah. is thinner than other walls. I can't but hear on my on the other side. Other Another side, unit? Yeah, other side, I can't hear my neighbor. Can't, his name is Nelson, and I can't he ever hear him. You huh. know, I've never heard him once. You know, well, so, so I think it's that this wall is really a a, a newer wall than when the yeah, building was doesn't built. doesn't have the thickness and the insulation. That's right. That's uh, right. Well, I've got a neighbor upstairs yeah. that vacuums 24 7 24 7 and uh, you know this building was built i think in the mid 70s mm -hmm. so it's not the highest quality building it is yeah. it's quality compared yeah. to everything else that's built today but yeah. um uh it's you know i can i can hear uh, uh you can hear people in the hallway uh, mm -hmm. I hear the vacuuming all the time. And then if I go out on my patio, which looks at Mount Diablo, I mean, I have a very nice view in this apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and so I, you know, I see Mount Diablo, which you've seen, it's, it's beautiful. Right. Uh, but uh, if I try to barbecue on the patio, mm -hmm. she turns me into management because management said no more barbecuing. So, you know, I, I said to myself, this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, you um, don't need that. You don't need that either. But here's the thing. Um, I used to, remember, I, were you ever to my apartment on 14th Street? Yes. Yeah. Well, that apartment, I I don't know what was happening, but every night when I was trying to go to sleep, it was yeah. like somebody had a dog upstairs who was somehow rolling something back and forth. I don't see how you could hear anything. There was so much street noise. I know. In the, that apartment. I mean, it was. No, it, was it, like wasn't, were, it wasn't that noisy. We had double paned windows and stuff. Well, so. uh, for when plus, I was there. Plus, the bedroom was in the back, which. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. I, I, don't, I was only in your living room. Right. But anyway, what happened was this, it was like a dog every night rolling stuff back and forth, back and forth. And finally, yeah. I, I went downstairs to the manager of the building and I said, you know, this is kind of getting noisy up there. some dog rolling around back they said oh they don't own a dog <laughs> it's I a said, ghost i know i said well what is it they said oh it's rats wonderful rats in the superstructure who every night would run back and forth i know they were playing volleyball or something yeah. you know yeah well they're trying to get out they're stuck in the wall uh, and you know they're eating their way through the insulation well, they, well they never they never made it to my apartment thank god you know yeah but I mean, that, those kind of things happen. You know, it's it's yeah. amazing. It's just amazing. Oh, people get these rat infestations. Uh, I did a bid once for for a, a, a place mm -hmm. that the whole the whole unit was infested with rats in the walls. Really? And and they couldn't get rid of them. Mm. You know? Oh, you can get rid of them. You just got to yeah, bring somebody in to do now. it. Well, you got to bring somebody in to do it. No, this is poison. You know. Yeah. It's good poison that can take yeah. care of that. Um, we got yeah. rid of our, we had mice. We had a mouse. We yeah. had a mouse, maybe two mice. We couldn't figure out. It was maybe one and another one that looked just like him. Okay. <laughs> and I, they I, all look alike. And uh, we uh, we did everything. We put traps down and stuff. And it was like, I'm sure he went to the trap, ate the, ate the poison and went, ha ha, I laugh at you. I've eaten this so much that I can still stay alive after this. You know, but wait a minute, let me finish the story. Yeah, oh yeah. So we tried everything. We brought an exterminator in. He put down the traps. He put down the bait. He put down the poison. He did the bah, 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 sprayed. Did all of that. Still, we got at least two mice. Okay. Yeah. So somebody said, "You know, dude, go out and buy some of this uh, peppermint spray." And it seems that mice hate peppermint. 
I don't know why, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they hate peppermint, and so you put this, just spray this peppermint spray, which smells wonderful. Yeah. And if you were to like spray it on your finger and, and lick it, it's not going to kill you or anything. Yeah. They all disappeared. No more rats. No more mice. Rather, they just Very hated the hated the peppermint spray. Well, you know, you know, we say that all these mice look alike. Mm -hmm. You know what they say about us? The same thing. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, talking about mice, our friends in Disneyland are losing their ability to self-govern uh, because of the... Uh, yeah, we, we, I know that. And yeah. uh, we discussed this last night on the show. We'll probably talk about it again tonight. And uh, my feeling is, you know what I'd do if I were Disney? Bye bye I'm Well, it's kind of tough. Well, no, to it's not tough. You just say you're going to close Disneyland down. And, uh, and, and I, I uh, unless uh, you're going to close Disneyland down, unless they turn that whole thing around, you watch how fast they do it. Well, they also, also, they're, they're doing big disservice to all the people who live up there because their taxes are going to go up. Yeah. Their taxes are going to go up. Uh, it's going to be a hardship on them. They're going to have to create their own fire departments, their own uh, uh, police departments, all of that. And well, and they're doing a great disservice to the people just just on their because of their own ego. Well, why know? are many of the Disney employees saying that Disney shouldn't get involved in this fight? They're not saying it. Well, I don't know where you read that. A lot of the Disney employees are gay and they're all for this thing. Yeah, you know, and the rest work with them and are friends with them and are sympathetic. They're all young people. They don't care. Yeah, you know. But it, is it actually uh, don't say gay or is it don't teach kids? No, no, uh, no, it's none of that. From kindergarten it's, to it's third It's none grade. of that. It's just that Disney came out with an opinion that they shouldn't be, they shouldn't put, say, do these things where they're making uh, kids who are gay in schools feel alienated and so on. And that they didn't approve of the don't say gay uh, philosophy. Not that it, any of it applies to, the, to Disney. OK, right. It doesn't apply to Disney in the least, but they felt that it was a terrible, terrible thing. And the governor, who was egotistical, he just got all pissied because, hey, how dare you disagree with me? Well, you know? he is going out on a limb. Uh, no, he's uh, not. He's not, he, not going. He, he basically won the battle. Not with his stupid base. His stupid base will go, oh, he's doing a wonderful thing and he's prevent. But he's not doing anything. He's just going to cause a big hardship for the people who live up in that area. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, um, I, I understand, you know, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to say Disney's going to have to pay for you these know, services. Disney is not the only one. Well, they'll pay for it. You got a lot of money. Well, and they don't have to, they have the to maybe pay for it, but they're already paying for it because they already have their own police department. They already have their own fire department. You know, they have all those services. Uh, yeah. Because they are literally a municipality. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> well, not anymore, but for the time being. But all Disney has to do is just take a tough approach and say, okay, you want to play hardball? We're closing down Disney World. We're going to move it somewhere else. And you guys are going to be out how many millions and millions and millions of dollars a year in revenue how, how to this state? And jobs? Five, ten thousand 10,000 jobs, something like that. How many billions of dollars would it take to move Disney World to another place? And now they not only have Disney World, they have another Disney something in, in Orlando. You, you they, know something? They, gotta, you, you know, they don't have another. Animal thing. Kingdom or something? No, no, or, no they don't. No, no. Yeah, they, they, have, they, they have a couple of no, different. No, they don't. They have, they have the, the whole Disney uh, Magic Kingdom complex. It includes the movie studio complex and the... Uh, um, uh, Epcot and so on, but no, the only other thing they have down there is a city uh, called, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, a Celebration, and yeah. that was the city that Disney created to be the perfect city, but it, it's... Well, you know. wouldn't it be uh, interesting if Elon Musk bought the shell, they move, Elon Musk takes it, and he opens up Musk yeah. World? Yeah, well, I mean, here's what here's what you could do, I mean... Uh, you know, there are a lot of other cities in the United States that would just die to have Disney, the Magic Kingdom there. 
you yeah. know and you, what you do is you get other cities to bid on it how uh, how would you think the all investors I know, all or I know. the stockholders would uh, would Look, approve all of this? i'm saying is you don't have to do it all you have to do is threaten it and they'll fold well it, you know if you threaten and you don't if you threaten that you're through. leaving the state of of florida you know, hey, we got the Magic Kingdom in Tokyo. We got the Magic Kingdom in, uh, I think they have one in China, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have all these all over the world. Uh, you know, we can do without this one. You're yeah. giving us a bad time. We're closing it down. Goodbye to 10,000 jobs. Goodbye to the tax revenue you get from it. And by the way, while we're at it, you may as well close up all the hotels and everything because uh, they're going to be about... Uh, how many millions of visitors to Florida that just won't be coming? Yeah. Well, have you ever gone to this uh, Disney uh, yeah. uh, Orlando? Yeah. Okay. I, I went there a few years ago. Uh, we had a convention and they took us there on a, mm -hmm. on a, a day trip. Mm -hmm. And so what ended up happening was you're walking around, you can't get on any of the rides because the lines are too long. Mm -hmm. And all you hear is screaming kids and parents wishing they weren't there. I think closing it down would do a, a service uh, to parents and the nation. Well, it might do, yeah, to that, uh, on that end of it. But what I'm saying is, is that think of just the effect it will have on Florida. Well, they're not moving. Well, they may yeah. do something like that. You never know. You know, you know I, all I they got to all they got to do is say it. And believe me, that uh, that uh, 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 what do you call it, the state senate or whatever will try to reverse what they've done. Well, uh, I think that uh, DeSantis should call their bluff. I, I think. Look, what do you mean they're bluff? There's no bluff now. They, yeah, they, you want to move? The next step move. is, uh, believe me, DeSantis is going to turn that state into literally a dust bowl. I, I mean, so. when you think of the the amount of revenue that they bring in, the amount of revenue they bring into that state. Oh, they it's, bring it's, in a lot of revenue. It's just that, you know, uh, Florida is a uh, no um, income tax, state income tax state. And yeah, but uh, it is, but it, it, the businesses pay income tax. Uh I don't know about that. I know that personal income tax. Well, we're not talking about personal income tax here. They're going to lose all the tax money from Disney World. No, you know, we'll, they're going to we'll they, they're going to they're going to they they're going to. Uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff that it's it's it, and on top of that, the hardship it's going to put those people in now, and the amount of taxes they're going to have to pay in order to have a fire department, in order to have a police department, all those kind of things. Well, you know. Disney's going to have to pay. Hmm? If they want a police department and a fire department, and they're not supplying it, they're going to have to pay. Well, they're going to have they're going to they're going to be they're going to be paying. Uh, yeah, Florida's sure. going to get that income what, what, instead of instead of Disney uh, doing it on their own. Uh, another believe uh, me, another, it, it's going to be much cheaper for the state of Florida to let Disney have its own fire department and its own police department. Well, that's your that's supposition and there I are mean, hospitals they have there all kinds of things to supplement disney world you know and they'll probably continue to and, do that. and here's the reason why they should be allowed to maintain that municipality status or whatever it's called when they took over that place what was there swamp and what was beyond that swamp and what was beyond that more swamp more swamp <laughs> What is all that now? It's Swamp. Disney World. No, it's Disney World. It's, or uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Universal Studios? Do you know the only reason they don't have swarms of mosquitoes there is that uh, Disney said that they couldn't allow any standing water anywhere in the park. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, it would be a swamp infested with mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, they 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 turn that into a very lush, wonderful area. So, yeah. I mean, why shouldn't they own it? I mean, why, they own it. But why shouldn't they have it as their own municipality and be able to rule over it? You know? Well, you know, I mean, they they, bit, they built it out of nothing. It's theirs. Well, it's very simple because they're in the state of Florida. Phil, do you agree with what the state of Florida did? Come on. Um, I thought it was a pissing match, and it wasn't necessary, and uh, that 
Disney uh, is is holding uh, uh, their their ju- they they've got their issues. Florida has its issues. Well, let's, let's have it. let's have a little sympathy for Disney for a moment. Okay, why? Why? Because they're in a between a rock and a hard place. It's either come out against this thing, or be with it. You know, and in one case you make every gay in America mad at you, and in the other case you got the, you got DeSantis mad at you. Who would you rather have mad at you if you're running something like Disney World? Well, uh, the gays don't bring kids there. Uh, well, yeah, I guess the, they do. The gays you know. go to Disney World, though, and gays work at Disney World. What is the percentage of gays in Florida or in the United States in general? I have what, no what, idea. I have no idea because, and I don't think we could ever say anybody has an idea, because the reason we don't know for sure is there are a lot of people who are just not coming out of the closet, even to this day, okay? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, I saw a, uh, a breakdown of, uh, you know, how, uh, what the percentage of blacks, the percentage of uh, Hispanic, the, uh, and the percentage of um, Asian, uh, American, uh, Indian, and the percentage of gays and uh, or LGBTQ. Uh, yeah. uh, these are uh, these are the Bruce Jenner types that dress up like women but are really men, and the women that dress up like Bruce Jenner. That's trans. The trans. Mm-hmm. That is a very very small percentage, and isn't isn't that what they're talking about? I would say. Look, I would say I have a theory about gay. Okay, and and I may be wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. Okay, thank you. And then I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> uh, you <yeah>, asked. I... <laughs> I think as the density of population grows, okay, as the density of population grows, um, the uh, there is a thing in nature which kind of it's like pushing one side of a balloon and the other side kind of pushes out that you find that you probably have more homosexuality uh, as the um, population gets more dense because it's a way of nature evening things out. In other uh, words, you then have a population of people who don't exactly procreate. In other words, they don't have kids. Well, they can adopt. They can know. adopt, but what I'm saying is they don't have kids. And they surrogate. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's something nature has. It's a certain stopgap that nature has, and that the more the, there's a density of population, I think the more gays you're going to start, you're going to have. So in ancient Rome, uh, there uh, there was, I guess, homosexuality. Well, no, would... they, they, it wasn't homosexuality. It was just polysexuality. It was they would fuck anything that moved. Okay, they had right. they didn't think of being of men being with men as being wrong particularly, but they didn't think of men being with women as wrong either. And many guys who who you know lacking any women around have sex with the guys. I guess you know people in prison, you know, uh, 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 oftentimes have uh, sex with other men in a men's prison. Yeah, but, but we've heard, so so, so we've heard. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. but of course, there's that women's prison. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, they came out and said that the prisoners were getting pregnant, and it was all women. But I guess they also said that there were some trans men in that prison. Do you think that there was some activity going on? That, probably, uh, probably, because it doesn't mean the trans men don't like having sex with women. Yeah, you know. Well, I wonder if that's a good idea. Well, no, I knew I knew several trans men, and they all were, you know, had had girlfriends. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, Bruce Jenner or uh, Caitlyn Jenner has has a girlfriend. I had somebody who was a was a woman was a guy, yeah, who became a woman so that she could have. Uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What was it? Wait a minute. Was it? How was it? It was she. It was a woman, I think, who wanted to be a man so she could become a man so she could have sex with women. And I said, wasn't the easy way just becoming a lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, I mean, how did that work out? You know, I mean, aren't they missing a part? I don't know. There was I can't remember what the, the thing was, but it was yeah. it was either a guy who uh, who dressed as a woman. Yeah. And then wanted to have sex with I don't know. I can't remember now, but. Hey, your friend uh, Alex Jones, he's got the... Uh, my surprise. friend Alex Jones. <laughs> well, yeah, my big pal Alex Jones. Let me call him up right now, okay? 
Yeah, well, I guess he's being uh, there. Uh, he filed bankruptcy, and I guess they're trying to overturn that for the uh, families of um, of. Um, well, he uh, he deserves to have gotten sued for that. You know, well, he got sued, and he and he, he hurt a bunch of people who were already hurting. All right, yeah. that was a cruel thing for him to do. Okay, so I have no sympathy for Alex Jones, but you heard what else about Alex Jones, don't you? Uh, no, what happened? He announced that he is willing to uh, testify before the January 6th committee. Oh, really? And tell him everything he knows. Which might be nothing. Might be a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah, might be no, a lot. You know, we'll see. I, I, I think there's a, a lot to do about nothing uh, with, with this thing. I, think I don't think... Uh, not... Uh, uh, Nothing? Did you see what happened at the Capitol, or didn't you notice it? Well, yeah, I I noticed that um, that there was a spontaneous uh, uh, protest, and that uh, there were a bunch of people that were oh, trying I, to I, I, gin I the place yeah, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and uh, no nobody got nobody died as a result of it. Yeah, one protester. Oh no, won. no, no, more than that. Well, you had a bunch of cops that committed suicide. And you had some cops who died of heart attacks in the days following it. I mean, it, it, a lot of people were hurt physically, and they tried to prevent the transition of the government from one party to another. I mean, they tried to stop the dutiful election and the dutiful process of the United States of America. You, go, you, agree, you think that's just like a little prank? No, I think those people were there to have their voices heard. And no, they weren't there to have their voices heard. They were there to do exactly what they did. They 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 uh, destroyed the place. They uh, made people. They terrorized people. I mean, there are people people who just worked there who were just terrorized by this. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, we, uh, uh, Phil, don't try to excuse what went on on January sixth. Is uh, oh, some people who wanted to visit the nation's capital. Okay. Yeah. And, don't don't and, get don't get that stupid on me, okay? Uh, don't get that stupid on well, me. Well, I, I you know I I don't know how they could have spread the word to these uh, to all of these people to go there and do this damage. I think it was spontaneous. And uh, I think oh, you don't think the speech the president gave when he said go go to the go to the Capitol now and, and let your voices be let heard. your voices be heard yeah and and I'll go with you he said I'll go that's, with that's, you he didn't right, go with that's them. a protest that, that's a protest no it's a but... it's a protest up to a point at yeah. a certain point it becomes a riot Phil it becomes okay. destruction and it becomes uh it becomes a a, a, a terrible terrible thing that so, you're doing to other people the, the stuff that happened over the summer and what they call the chop zone uh, was 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 that any less? Uh, what was the chop uh, zone? Uh, up uh, in Portland, Seattle. That has nothing to do with what happened. No, it has Capitol. plenty to do with nothing set, to do with Phil. It set nothing. The tone. Nothing. It nothing. Set the tone no, it didn't of, set a tone. You know yeah, who set the tone? You know who set the tone for January sixth? Uh, yeah, Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump and his speech that he gave, and go back and listen to it and tell me if that is an inciting speech. I, I don't... Uh, Phil, I, I you're, heard a smart, you're a smarter guy than this. You're trying to make an argument for the sake of making an argument, but you can't say what went on on January 6th was, well, you know, it was almost the end of our democracy as we well, know. Well, they're going to have an investigation, and they'll get down to the bottom of mm -hmm. it. Uh, and you know, once they do that, we'll we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I wonder if uh, if the left sent people in there just to instigate. Phil, like, come on, come yeah. on, give me a break. And, and you mean the left is is free, give me is, a break, Phil? Is, the, is, you uh, cite me any culpable? Uh, did you see those people? I don't think any of them were. You know, uh, you we're, know we're 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 de Democrats. Okay, so you're judging a book by its cover. The Democrats aren't capable of that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did Seattle, Portland, and, uh, and and so forth. I mean, they took over a city for weeks. Uh, people got killed there. Uh, businesses Phil, were destroyed. That was a diff entirely different set, set of circumstances and reasons for it happening. It was not a case of them trying to uh, uh, 
do away with due process in this country of, of, of verifying an election. This was happening while we were trying to verify an election, a very, very big moment in our democracy where we say, okay, everybody stands up, well, we, our state voted for so-and-so, so many points, so many votes, electoral votes, so on and so forth. It's a, it's a very important moment. They tried to destroy that moment. And on top of that, they were yelling for the head of, of uh, what's his name, uh, the, our vice president? Pence. Pence. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, th this is this is what's being reported. Phil, Phil. I, it's, and, and, no, know, it's only being reported on Newsmax and One America and maybe occasionally on Fox when you've got an idiot like Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity at the helm. Yeah, well, uh, you know, there's two sides to every story. They'll get down to the bottom of it, especially if the investigations after uh, the next elections, uh, there'll be a different group. Oh, invested. they'll disband that committee completely. They'll disband well, that committee well, completely. Can they? You yes, know, they, they, they can. They, yes, they, they yeah, absolutely. Could, they absolutely the Dems can. could not disband uh, a Durham. So how could, uh, you know, when once they make these committees, I thought they have to go through... Uh, Durham the, the, didn't come to anything. Well, Durham didn't come to anything. You, well, you just it, cite, you know, you cite things because you cite a Phil, Phil, watch something besides Fox. I don't care if you maybe watch BBC News as an example. That's a good non-biased American reporting of news. You know, well, uh, uh, go, to, go over to BBC News, watch that for a while and then see what your opinion is about things. But you're being fed just one, you know, tome see, after I think, another. I think that you're you're being fed uh, a story Why? that- I'm not, I, what do I watch that's feeding it to me? CNN. I don't watch CNN. I don't well, watch you MSNBC. Want? I don't watch any of them. Okay, uh, well, how do you get your news? I get my news by, by literally- uh, Dreaming it up? No, reading newspapers, uh, you know. You read newspapers? Mm hmm Where do they sell newspapers anymore? I get the Times every day, Digital oh, that, Times, and that's, I, and I, that's and a I, non bias and I look at the uh, the New York Post, which is a Rupert. What is it? Still a Rupert Murdoch paper? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, it is. Probably. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, with the Times, for instance, weren't they the ones that killed the uh, Hunter Biden story uh, with uh, the laptops? No, I don't think so. Well, which which paper uh, killed it? Because I think it was the Post that came out with it, and then you had Twitter, Facebook, and everyone else. Uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they killed it. I, I think I think the whole Hunter Biden laptop thing was a phony story. But you know, that, that's that's what they reported. But it's turning out that it's not so phony. Oh, really? Where did you hear that? I hear it on the where, True where, News Network. Where, where, where do you hear it, Phil? <laughs> the True News Network. Anyway, can you stick around here, Phil? Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. Let me admit all these people here are waiting, just a handful of them. And uh, uh, I noticed that Charlie was calling but uh, earlier, but he never called back. I had problems signing on tonight. Oh, I, just... I, I had problems, too. No. And uh, no, uh, the well... Veri Verizon yesterday, uh, Faye lost her phone. And so I gave her my phone, and I finally got into the 22nd century here. I got a uh, iPhone 13 mini, mm -hmm. and uh, I like it. It's about the size of a iPhone 5, and uh, very nice phone. Mm -hmm. So she went to Verizon to convert my old phone, the iPhone 10, into a yeah, phone. Yeah, this is for really her. interesting, Phil. Yeah, really, well, we're all logging. Hold, we're hold it, Verizon. Wait a minute, hold on, folks. Do you want to hear? Want to hear how this story turned out? Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, Verizon. Their network was down, <laughs> and they felt that it. Uh, it's a coincidence that it was down because of the tests that Putin was doing with the ICBMs. Where did you hear that? <laughs> Where'd you get that off a of Dredge? <laughs> no, I didn't get it off a of Dredge. But, uh, you know, it's just a coincidence that they're launching ICBMs in, in, in Russia. And uh, they're, they're and launching Rome. ICBMs all the time, Phil. They tell oh, you ignorant slut. <laughs> all right. I mean, can you I like, like I like how I like how I haven't Phil said that says, in a while. I just got to say it. Can, OK, I, Santa. <laughs> I love how Phil says the January 6th was a get together. Then it was a, a, a protest and then it was a riot. 
minute by minute, he changes his mind. It was a party. A oh, party, sorry. Yeah, they all stayed inside the ropes. Yes. It was a tour. Three-hour tour. Three hour tour. Yes. Boy, there's no, <laughs> nobody watching tonight. No? Just no. Bill's on. Damn, I just want to see what he's smoking. It's probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So while, while you guys were talking about Disney World, I looked it up. In 2021, according to the IRS and the state of Florida, mm -hmm. in state and local taxes in Florida, they paid $780 million in 2021. How much? How much? $780 million. In what? Taxes? In taxes, the state and local taxes in Florida. How much uh, uh, do some other large corporations pay? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have, I believe you, you've been on before, haven't you, Steve? No, it's been my on. first time. Oh, it's your first time. Oh, yeah. well, congratulations. Oh, See, thanks. I, I, I was hedging my bets here. See, because I, I didn't know. I thought, well, I probably have seen him before. I don't know. You know. <laughs> no, I'm uh, actually been watching you for quite a while now. And um, gosh, go a couple months or so. And then, of course, going all the way back into the KMEL and, you know, Quake, Live 105 days. You aren't a broadcaster by any chance, are you? I just play one. Oh, you just play one. <laughs> no, I'm. I am actually in radio, yeah. You are in radio. How did I know? How did I know? The microphone. The equipment in front of us. Also, Boys. pretty damn good. Pretty, pretty. It's the only way I can talk. I'm, I can't I can't do it through the computer. Pretty so. damn good voice, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, where Where do you, uh, are you working now as a uh, uh, broadcaster? Yes. Uh, you want to tell us where? Um, I was at, uh, well, I'm at KQED in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Oh, San so Francisco. on there Alex and there too. Were you Alex? What? Yeah. No, I was never on KQED. Yes, you were. No. You did. Uh, I, well, you I did was a, on a TV uh, show at KQED. He's talking about the radio station, right? No, yes. uh, he, he is, but I think yeah. on the TV, you were. Well, I did comedy tonight there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's and then I was on the two stations over here in the East Bay. Um, I'm in Danville. So, um, KKDV Walnut Creek and KKIQ over in Pleasanton. Yeah. So, but are you still are you still at KQED? Yes. No oh, good. You do a daily show, or are you just an announcer? Um, I'm on call there. Um, so I work there. I mean, on call is basically you're there all the time. But um, yeah, I'm one of the announcers on the station. Okay. And do you do your work there, or are you doing it from home now? No, you have to do it. You have to go in. They, they so like you get tracking. Well, no, a lot of people, a lot of people broadcasting <laughs> are doing their stuff now from home. I mean, uh, you know, they're virtual radio stations. Well, ever since the pandemic started, um, I had to go in. I mean, KQED and the stations out here, even though I have a setup here at home, they said no. And so it was nice to get out, but, you know, <laughs> I never got a chance to stay in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> KQED, by the way, holds a very major <laughs> distinction in this country in that they are the only nonprofit radio station to be dominant number one in their market. Yeah, it's true. And, and it, it's strange because the programming you do is not that different from what they do in Cleveland, you know. But That's true. But the reason is, is that San Francisco is such an odd market that way that you have the audience for it, you know? Right. And, and I look at the ratings every now and then for San Francisco, and right there at the top is KQED, and the second station below them is like two points below. <laughs> the Spanish station. Yeah, or something like no. that. Yeah. Or KCBS or yeah. something. And, yeah. and I, it, that's got to be driving the commercial stations nuts because KQED, and it's got to be driving KQED nuts, because if they did run commercial, commercials, they could make a fortune. Oh, my gosh. Well, they're actually, do, you know, you think about it because they do funders on there. Yeah. And that's basically a commercial. So, you know, they have a sales department that will take care of that. Well, um, well I had, an, I had they have sponsors. I had an yeah. argument. I ran for the board of directors at KQED at one time. No. And I had no chance of winning because... I found out it's kind of a phony election. But anyway, I tried. And one of my arguments was... Fixed. One of, what, what? Fixed. They fixed. Yeah, the fix was in. 
I want to. I, I want to recap. Kind of like the 2020 election. <laughs> I, uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh. Anyway, hey. one of the stances I took was that uh, the KQED said they were a non-commercial station, and yet the TV station, and yet when you'd be watching like a show during fundraising and so on, every 15 minutes they got like a 10-minute break for you know for a fundraiser thing. And yeah, that only went on for a month, but the rest of the time they also ran spots saying, please subscribe to KQED. I added them all up for a year, and it came to more commercial time than would be on a radio station or a TV mm -hmm. station. I went with you and Susan when you had a table for the fundraiser. You, you remember when you, you, you were doing a, a table of stuff for the auction? What? Uh, on the TV. They, they had a it, Alex. table of products, and so uh, you you were. I kept walking behind you and getting on camera, but uh, the, I don't uh, even remember that. Yeah, no, it, it, they have the auction, and yeah. you had a table that you were pitching. I was pitching what was on the table. On the table, I right. guess I don't remember that, but I I suppose yeah. I did. Yeah. Probably carpet samples. Yeah, nah, it was uh, you, Susan, and myself. So, uh, but but you're at the radio station. The radio station doesn't really deal with the TV station that much, do they? No, not really. Yeah. Other than the PBS News Hour, that's about it. But yeah, yeah. Well, that would be a natural though. You would do, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I got a question. So, how do you? I don't remember Phil from back in the day, but Nobody does. I don't either. <laughs> That's the problem. He uh, claims he knew me, but I don't remember it. Uh, you said you listened to Camel, right? Yeah. Well, I, I had a little character that every once in a while I would do. It was uh, Bruce Century. And I said I was Thaddeus Century's son the because uh, it was Century Broadcasting. And I used to say, Alex, you got to play a request. If you don't play my request, I'm, I'm Thaddeus Century's son. I'm going to have you on one of our CB radio stations in Cincinnati. And, uh, you know, that, I don't Is remember that, where that. I don't take no request comes in. No, he, he invented that. But I, I pushed. Phil you know, invented everything else that I do. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> but uh, no, but I, um, um, you know, uh, what was I what was I saying? I can't remember. Uh, that. Uh, you He asked you about. Uh, oh, where I came around from. I have no idea. Yeah. He's one of those we, people. We were, we were neighbors. He was one of those kind of people. That every time he showed up, I go, you know him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he had me. He, he needed a producer uh, to answer the phones, pick the music, pull the carts. And so I did that for uh, a summer. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. And then we hired somebody to do it who wasn't you. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I was doing you a favor, okay. but that was a camel. So anyway, so, you know, really, Steve, as soon as I heard the voice, I went and, and the microphone wasn't a dead giveaway because, you know, Phil's got one of those, too, and his voice sucks, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, 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 it wasn't the microphone. It was just the voice, you know, <clears throat> there's a certain there's a certain timber that you get after a while being an announcer yeah I I actually had to play mine down a little bit because it was too announcery right. and, and I so I played it down and kind of like roughened it up a little bit because I figured it wasn't funny for me to be like a radio announcer you know <laughs> put my hand on my ear and oh that's it yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, what can I say? You know, I can't make a crank call, that's for sure. So Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you can. You can tell them you're from a radio station and you're having a contest. And, uh, <laughs> you know, give me your credit card number and uh, yeah. <laughs> word. <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's just amazing, you know, uh, what's happened to San Francisco radio. I mean, uh, KGO completely, once they changed the rating system, all of a sudden, they went from number one for 35 years to number 30 in the market. And all of a sudden, you guys were number one. Well, you remember back in the day when, you know, people used to say, well, I listen to KQED, mm -hmm. you know, and, ooh, you're sophisticated or, you know, whatever it may be. But and all the broadcasters, all the commercial broadcasters are saying, oh, that's just a bunch of 
It's not even true. Then all of a sudden, yeah, it got you know. You know, not- BGO was three letters, so it was easier to write in the book. Uh, you, you ask a drunk at a bar, why do they order Budweiser? Because three letters, Bud. Give me Bud, and you know that's that's what they drink. KGO, you got to write it in the book. It's easier to write than four letters. That's kind of like the three words. I don't think that had anything to do with the reason that KGO was number one. Uh, You know, people, I think, would write in there, uh, you know, uh, just because they had to. And and I think they were getting paid. I know I did. I had one of those little uh, uh, pager devices for a couple of years for TV, and it would also work with uh, uh, radio if you plugged it in through earphones uh, from Nielsen. By the way, uh, Steve, you'll notice that Phil doesn't shut up. Oh. <laughs> I, I've been noticing him ever since mm. I started watching you. So, uh, If I remember anything from him back in the day, it was that he didn't shut up. And I didn't even know. He said, who's that guy over there that won't shut up? You know, so. Anyway. Well, <laughs> um, when but, you needed a favor, you called me. Did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, when you even need an apartment. Where Isn't is Alzheimer's you? great, Alex? <laughs> yeah, it helps. It helps. You yeah. know. You mean on his part? <laughs> <laughs> like he imagines that he knew me? You know, that kind of thing. But uh, anyway. Um, so anyway, so today uh, we were talking about the Disney thing. And uh, I... Uh, you know, I just, I just, I just think Disney ought to play hardball and say, "Hey, you want to lose all that tax money? You want to lose all those jobs? We'll leave if you don't turn this thing around." Because after all, we turned this swamp into something. You know, forty uh, square miles is what they own. I, I always found it amazing. The t- one time I went down there, I, oh, I went down there twice, and both times I found it just amazing that they had turned this swamp into this thing. Right. You know, I mean, if there's anything amazingly magic about the Magic Kingdom, it's that they were able to turn that swamp into what it is. And also, the other thing that was amazing to me was if I took a gum wrapper and threw it on the ground, I could come back one minute later and it wouldn't be there. They have people constantly cleaning yeah. the place up. They do that in Disneyland, too. Oh, I know that. Of course, I'm talking about the Disney operations. That's what they do. You know, and I figured, what do they do? They have a giant vacuum cleaners that come out and <laughs> suck it all up, you know, while I'm not looking? There's no well, chewing gum on the ground either. No, none of no. that. None of that. You know, just absolutely amazing. <laughs> amazing, the operation. Excuse me, folks. Um, if you like coffee, every 15 minutes they rotate their coffee in Disneyland. Wow. What do you mean? They, if there's a if they, there's a pot of coffee sitting there, they put a, a time that it was made. Oh, I thought you meant they went to the urinals, caught it, and then <laughs> came back and recycled it. <laughs> they recycled they their coffee. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, Always sure. Press. Well, you know it. Uh, I'll tell you who else does something similar to that. Costco. You, you ever go to Costco and they have all that chicken? Yep. That okay. chicken stays there for maybe 15 minutes, I think. 15 to 20 minutes, and if it isn't sold by then, they pull it and put in new chicken. And it's that chicken is then sold. taken into the back room and made into chicken salad. It's also made into chicken soup. I mean, they recycle the whole the chickens. You know, oh. well, we did it on the rotisserie. Now we may as well use it if we don't sell it fast enough. So. That's right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's a good business model. Yeah. yeah. It really uh, is. What? The, uh, there was two other things. Uh, it seems as though you know Netflix is having some uh, issues, and also CNN Plus is shutting down yeah. after a month. I was going to get to that, but you don't let me get to anything. You just spoil it for me. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm a spoiler. CNN Plus, which they've been working on for a good year, right? Uh, I could have told you ahead of time it wasn't going to do well. It wasn't going to do well because who needs it? Yeah. You know, they to begin with, they couldn't recycle, they couldn't like retransmit their newscast over on CNN Plus because they have a deal with all their uh, cable companies that they won't do that. 
that you know when they pay them a certain amount of money to carry CNN it's not going to show up on something like CNN plus so CNN plus was nothing but a bunch of programs they invented and old documentaries they had done and I looked at it and I went they were willing to give it to you for half the price for life which would be 2.99 a month and I looked at it and I said this ain't worth 2.99 a month you know and and I didn't do it uh, and I I predicted it wouldn't do well but I didn't think it was going to go out of business 30 days after they initiated it yeah yeah and and nobody and sign up for a life subscription. did anybody here subscribe to it no, they only had some, about it they only had something exactly and also it wasn't showing up on uh, Apple TV wasn't didn't have it and uh, 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 Roku didn't have it so if they didn't have it you're out of business you know so I mean <laughs> Well, it, it also says their uh, staffers are furious, I guess, because, uh, you know, people move, they, they, they oh, yeah. rented apartments and bought homes. Well, they are happy. doing something nice, fairly decent. They're giving everybody six months severance, okay, which well, is pretty nice. nice. And they're trying to, they say there are something like, of the 500 people they had on there, something like 150 jobs or something that they're moving over to CNN, so they'll be in line to try it out for those, okay? I thought they were just getting a, a lifetime subscription to CNN Plus. Well, yeah, right, they've got that. The thing mm -hmm. is that you've got guys like uh, Wallace, um, what, what's his first well, yeah, name? Yeah, Casey Hunt went over there too. Casey huh? Hunt went over there from, from MSNBC. Yeah. Uh, although I think she'll probably just be absorbed into CNN, because she's, yeah. she's very good, okay? Uh, and uh, 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 what's his name? Wallace. I'm sure they'll they'll use him on CNN. You know, he's a good get. And was he, he was not he, on CNN. What was he on CNN Plus? He was on, he was going to be on CNN Plus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he left Fox for uh, one. Well, moment. a lot of people are bailing out of Fox. Yeah. I mean, what's his name? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Shepard Smith. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, went over to uh, CNBC. NBC, yeah. uh, and does a nightly newscast there, and and occasionally now is when that Lester Holt is taking the night off, substitutes for him on the evening news. So I mean he's he's uh, and he's he's good. I I like Shepard Smith. Always liked him. He was the only honest person over at Fox. I know <laughs> Phil, you love all those other people. <laughs> Hey, I love everybody. What happened? On, you know, the no. only good thing about Fox was they had really good-looking women on that noon show. The the uh, uh, I don't know what they call it. The odd yeah. man out. Or, no, oh, the couch. Now all they have is outnumbered. Outnumbered, yeah. outnumbered. Yeah. And they're not. Am I right? They they don't look as good as they used to. They all no. kind of look seedy. You know. COVID got because to Roger it. Ailes <laughs> knew how to pick women. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did. He was good at that. Yes, uh, yes, Alan. Uh, Steve, uh, didn't you start a company of broadcast DJs or something like that? Wow. <laughs> Bay Area broadcast DJs? I, Did you just I look heard. me up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I actually... Alan heard, I, I had the wording wrong, so I looked it up to make sure I got the wording right. <laughs> Did you start an organization like that? I have Bay Area broadcast DJs. Um, Alan is our ga Gabnet stalker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to find out about me? Oh, yeah. No, but I mean, tell us about it. You know. Oh, it's, it's basically I just go out and MC a, a lot of events. Um, I don't do it anymore. I kind of put that to the oh, side. Oh, it's it's a business. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not an organization. It's a business. No, no. In other words, if I'm a DJ, that kind of DJ, right? Eh, well, no. I, I was mainly the, <laughs> I just hosted a lot of events. Oh, I uh, see. The music okay. was something else on the side, but I never really, you But know. when you have, have this organization, Bay Area DJs, are these guys who will go out with their turntables and play music at events and things like that? Back then, yeah, back in the 80s and in that area. Oh, when yeah. you started it. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays okay. everything's on iPads, huh? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's on the hard drive. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. You just hand everybody an iPhone and say, listen, you know, here. That's all yeah. people need to do today. I don't yeah. why hire a DJ. So, so they hire, but now hiring you for events, what kind of events? It'd be nonprofits, um, raising funds for whatever it may be, cancer resource or whoever it is. Um, a lot of that I did. And oh. it was connected to, well, since I was on the radio, they hired me to come out to do that celebrity kind of thing. So, yeah. but did, did, like an organization that was raising money, did you charge them yourself for your services? Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. All right. Okay. Nonprofits have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get a paycheck every week from one of them. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now, yeah. you were on, uh, speaking of KGO, you were on KGO for a little bit, weren't you? No. One night. Oh, it was one ah, night. One well, night. That was well, it. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happened was there was a guy, the general manager, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Terrell Matheny's son? No, 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 no. Um, I'm trying to remember his name now. But anyway, uh, he he was very egotistical. And uh, I did one night because they wanted to see what kind of reaction they would get because I was no longer at uh, uh, Live 105, you know. And they wanted to see what kind of reaction they would get with me doing a show on KGO. So I did the show on KGO, and some people called up and said, oh, it's great to have you on the air again. And I go, well, thank you very much, but let's not get into that. Let me do a show here. And we would do, I was doing a show, basically. Well, after the show, this general manager got a deluge of phone calls and mail to the radio station saying it was great to hear Alex Bennett. We'd like to hear him back on again. And this asshole felt that I had told people to do it. Oh, no. And that I had rigged it for them to all call. He didn't realize it was a genuine reaction to me being on the air there. He, he just didn't want to think that I had that kind of popularity. And he thought I just... I phonied it. Maybe I was I was calling twenty times, you know, to say how much I liked me, you know. Where did he come from? I mean, uh, he, he, almost, he he was the general manager kind of, of KGO job, for like thirty years. Uh, yeah, you you almost got a job there uh, when I was talking to Kevin Matheny, Terrell Matheny's son. Oh, this is said, a this oh, is a good one. This is a good yeah, one. Yeah, he uh, Terrell Matheny hired Alex at WMCA Radio and what? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, well, uh, who hired you, Ruth Meyer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But Terrell Matheny became the program director at WMCA. Well, actually, it wasn't even Ruth Meyer. It was somebody else. I'm trying to remember his name now. Who was the last good guy, and Ruth yeah. Meyer's invented but, the good guys. Yeah, but she wasn't there at that time. Oh. Yeah. So, a anyway. But, uh, but anyway, you Terrell knew you, Terrell Matheny took over KGO in San Francisco. Oh, Kevin Matheny, his son. His, uh, Kevin Matheny. And because uh, Kevin was a PD in, in Detroit, and another yeah. friend of mine. And so him. he came to San Francisco and became right. the PD of KGO. Oh. Am I right? Right. And it? my yeah. friend Barry wanted, you know, set us up to, you know, get together friends. And uh, so I was chatting with him here and there. And I told him, you know, I met his father and and so forth and i told him about you and he says i loved alex bennett you know when i was a kid at wmca just walking around the hallways alex was there i i, I mm -hmm. love the guy so i you know we tried to put you together with him mm -hmm. then what happened to the guy he here's what happened we he, i think i talked to him or wrote to him or whatever and yeah. we said we he said i'd love to get together and have lunch and talk to you about a few things and maybe we can work something out or whatever and i'm thinking hey i'm gonna be back on the air again soon and a couple of days later, he gets fired. No, he had a heart attack. We oh, had a heart attack. That was it. Yeah, 59, he dropped dead. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my, that's yeah. my kind of luck, you know. Yeah. Guy drops, oh, the one guy who was willing to hire me drops dead. Right. So I, I figured I had something for you, but, you know. Yeah, well, kill. don't do that for anybody else ever again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention my name. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know who Kevin Matheny was in that um, uh, special that was done by um, uh, what's his name, Howard Stern. Well, he uh, he was ba Bad Breath or whatever the guy's oh, name. Pig, pig Breath or pig something. Pig Breath or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, in, in especially, you know, not yeah. especially in the movie, in the book. Movie. Yeah. 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 yeah he was a pig breath. I was it pig yeah. breath? Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. That was Kevin. Yeah. That was him. Yeah. Huh. Hey, I'll take a job from Pig Breath. I don't give a shit. You know, I'm looking for work, right? You know. So, My gosh. Yeah. Well, one more KML question. Yeah. KML was another place, folks, that I worked. Uh, I'm, I was pretty famous for getting fired. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Well, okay. Well, the question is you had a son that was on there. Mm, yeah. Joe there was no, no. It no, was a kid no. who called the show. Oh, it was a kid. Okay. Yeah. And I used to say that he was actually my son. That's what And the was. kid okay. would always call up and say, hi, dad. How are you doing? It was a kid. He was a kid. <laughs> and he played along with the joke beautifully. And, and everybody, you heard it, you know. I believed it. You believed it. And uh, that, it was hilarious. And the kid every now and then has written me over the years. He hasn't written me in a while. And he's like in his 50s now or something <laughs> um, but he 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 was he was in contact with me up to a couple of years ago for all i know he may be dead by now yeah i don't know alex had to work with his mother there that's what i was going to say because it was your mom and then also the the child i'm like wow that's interesting well my that mom was uh, my my mom was on a kmel yeah and uh the funny part about it was is that she had they gave her a show she gave her a weekly show ruth bennett's top 10 countdown i remember that it was uh, the evening right yeah on the weekend yeah and uh she got very well known around the country i mean people would do articles about her and everything like that i'm going here i've worked all my life to get to a decent position in this business and my mother eclipses me and is getting publicity elsewhere and the ultimate was she gets a call from the tonight show wow and they want her on as a guest and my mother turned them down. She did? <laughs> yeah. And I kind of felt that uh, you did a good thing, Mom, because, you know, I would have killed you if you were on The Tonight Show. <laughs> and I'm still on this little dinky radio station in San Francisco. That would have been funny. But anyway, my, it's, uh, well, everybody loved the idea of an 80-year-old uh, woman doing a, a radio show, a top 10 countdown. So anyway, so I, I then quit KMEL to go over to the Quake. And there's a whole, it's a whole big rigmarole about it. And, you know, they were threatening to sue me because I was leaving and so on. But they, they didn't ultimately. But so I had to go out and get lawyers just to protect me so I could go over to the other radio station. So I hired this lawyer. And I'm talking with him one day. And he said, by the way, um, your mother still does a show at KMEL, doesn't she? And I go, yeah. He said, don't talk to her. I said, why? He says, because you're, you're in a, a legal action with the radio station she works for. Don't talk to her. I said, she's my mother. <laughs> what? I, I can't talk to my mother? Would have been a good excuse. Hey, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had, didn't have the heart to tell him I didn't like talking to her that much. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> but that was that was bizarre, that whole thing, you know. But That was uh, something else, because she did she live to be over 100? She uh, lived to be yeah, over 100. She was <clears throat> she almost made it to 101. Wow. But I think when she went over 100, she went, ah, you know, I crossed the finish line. Now I can just plot, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, she made it to so you know. But I remember what she was like at 101, and I don't know if I want to make it that long, you know. Uh, although it, what's interesting is, is that as you get to be that age, you forget everybody, hmm. you know. So oh, yeah. I I think the world becomes a, well like you, Jeff. You forget everybody, don't you? That's right. They're all dead. <laughs> yeah, who? I mean, all the people I know are dead. You know, yeah. I mean, it's getting to the point. Hmm? Friends are no longer here. That's all. You know, I mean, every time I pick up the newspaper, I read another person I knew who died. Yeah. And I'm going, geez, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> amazing that I'm still here. Mm. Uh, but, uh, well, knock on wood. And or, on the radio. Or whatever on, this on, is. On, huh? <laughs> and on the radio or whatever this is on Zoom. 
Yeah, yeah. You're still here? I'm still here, you know, doing this. But uh, so anyway, you must have been a youngster when you listened to me, for crying out loud. I was. I'll admit it. Yeah. Um, on the show was a youngster when we listened to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know something, Alan? You're not really needed. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah, I was I was about I eighteen years old. Compliment. You were about eighteen years old. Yeah. And when I first right. listened to you on uh, KMEL, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I um, yeah that that was a. a I, it's funny. I had somebody come up to me once and say I used to listen to you when I was a kid, and I looked at him and he was like fifty years old. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, that was all possible, you know. I mean, it's amazing how fast the years go by. Like, did you listen to me when you were a child, Kevin? Uh, I wasn't a child. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. And no, I was uh, I was uh, married when I was listening to you. So I was about twenty something, twenty four, three, four, yeah. five, something like that. Yeah. It, 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 how many times you been married? Just once. Twice. Twice. Oh, okay. All right. And and Josh, you 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 you're you've only been married once, right, Josh? Uh, correct. Yes. Yes. So he, he would have been seven when he started. And how many years have you been married? Uh, 17. 17 years? You know, do you know that Marjorie and I have been married now, I think we're going on 11 years? And you know what popped up on? Yet? What? I was going to say what popped up on YouTube just the other day was your wedding video. Yes, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It is there. Yeah. We got married on the shores of Lake Tahoe. That was funny. Before it all burned down, you know. Oh, uh, man. But, uh, well, my parents were married in Lake Tahoe. So huh. uh, so it was kind of fitting that we got married in Lake Tahoe. And I hadn't even thought of that. I just said to her, we were going to, we went to San Francisco because we were there to see a movie, oddly enough. They were running this movie, Napoleon, which was a silent film with a full orchestra, five and a half hour long movie. And um, as long as we were there, I said, well, you know, I, I, let's go up to let's go up to Lake Tahoe. I said, because I always like to take a run up to the lake, you know, because I always thought it was a run up because I could do it in two and a half hours. Right? Bobby Slayton's ma uh, wedding at Lake Tahoe influence you at all? No, not at all. No. Not in the least. So I said, well, as long as we're going to Lake Tahoe, yeah. I said, why don't we get married? And she said, OK. So we went out, we bought rings really fast. And we went up to, we got somebody, we called ahead, we found somebody who would do the service out on the shores of Lake Tahoe where it was freezing our balls off. Well, my <laughs> balls off, she doesn't have balls. And um, uh, we got married up there and we signed our wedding papers at the McDonald's in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> funny, that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's on that video, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, Ronald McDonald was sitting right there. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the shadow of Ronald McDonald, we signed our wedding papers. So, like Ray's in Tahoe. Yeah, hey. yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Where are you? You're uh, where is that? Uh, oh. Bear Valley. Oh, look! You can see the ski lifts going back and yeah. forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not moving though. Oh, they're moving. Yeah, yeah. They're moving. Yeah, they're moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little video. Yeah. My people spare no expense at their backgrounds. <laughs> you know, I mean, Tony. but if you watch long enough, you'll see it's the same people moving back and forth. It's just a clip. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I'm very careful when I pick clips because I don't want a clip that, you know, goes like all of a sudden people go or a car goes, Beep! you know. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. This background I'm using here because this is a background, folks. Uh, is that's uh, my living room, so huh. I figured it's, that was it's a green Tony's screen. kitchen, huh? That's Tony's, Tony's kitchen, kitchen. <laughs> right? The wallpaper looks better on yours than it does in his. Yeah. Well, what happens with Tony when he's on? The light hits him <laughs> wrong, you know. So. Yeah. Oh, look! Look who else is in Tony's kitchen. Ah, yeah. No. <laughs> more appropriate. So is mom. <laughs> Let me see here. Do I have Tony's kitchen? Do you have Tony's kitchen? Psycho. Do, do I have Tony's kitchen? I yes. let's see if I do it. It's gonna you're gonna see it all come up and stuff like that. And that 
That's that's how, oh, there you, you, go. That's how you make radio. I asked that. See, everybody's there got goes. Tony's kitchen. There, there we go. Uh, let me see Thanks here. Thanks, Ray. Let me. Yeah, I took a screenshot once when he left. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta find it here. That's Tony's mother next to this Ray. This is causing yeah. ha- psycho. <laughs> this is causing havoc for me to do. But there we go. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> That is great. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Anybody see, else? You need you need a copy. <laughs> yeah. 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 We all we all did it. You know. Now if Tony would only call up, we won't believe it's <laughs> even it out. <laughs> yeah. You may notice though that uh, uh, you, you, this, the thing in the back of uh, Ray's picture there. Yeah. It's uh, Tony's yeah. Mother Mama Bay. Yeah, that was a very short window of opportunity. Yeah. Well, let me go back to my. There we go. Okay. Phil should put his barbecue up. Whoever listened to uh, Steve, right? What? What'd you say? Raised raised from the Bay Area. I'm from the Bay Area. Phil's from the Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah. You ever ever hear Steve, who's on the show? Uh, yeah. Okay. You've heard him. I yeah, think so. QED. Are you hearing what we're saying, Ray? Steve on the show? Yeah. I think they're talking about Steve me. Fox. They're talking yeah. about Steve oh, Fox. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Steve. He's on the radio. <laughs> You're on the radio? You're a radio person? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I play one. Yeah. You play one in real life? Oh, yeah. awesome. So I hear that if I went back to the Bay Area now, I would not be happy with it. No, you wouldn't. In what way? It's a <laughs> that it's totally a, different uh, place right now compared yeah, to what it was. It's, your, it's know. very woke. <laughs> Depends on how how much money you got. Can I we mean, can we t- can to we, live out in the you know Camino I, I, Del Mar? I would like to pass a law stopping yeah. the term woke from being used. Yes, sir. Well, but, I don't know how else to say it. Like I'm trying to figure out how to express what exactly what... is the definition of woke that you're aware, the opposite of sleeping. No, no, no. See, that's not what I mean when I say woke. Never mind. What do they no. mean? What does everybody mean when they say woke? Uh, uh, it means different things to different people, but I just don't know what other word to use. The Republicans use it as a derogatory it, term. Yeah. Right, there and you that's go, right there. And that's it, not it, what I'm doing. Women. But what does it mean? What is the if I said what's the definition of woke? What is the definition? It means Just you're aware of what's really going on. Oh man! That's what it means. I, I think <laughs> so. How is that derogatory? That's what I'm saying. That's because Republicans. Well, it's like when we called you guys liberals and you didn't I, like it. I am not Republican, and there's there are woke aspects of the entertainment industry in San Francisco that suck. Ray Big plays time. Well, like what? For your information. Like, okay. What? All right. Um, He's a straight actor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's, okay, let's just say, like, for me, and this is selfish, for me personally, as a 60-year-old cis, cisgendered white man. Well, now, what does that mean? That means <laughs> that I don't suck dick. <laughs> is that just, um, then why don't you just say a non a non suckable male? Yeah, and uh, so there's I have it's there's very little work left for me mm-hmm. for as a director or an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are only a handful of people my age who are working. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, what does that mean? No, 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 no I just said audio. that. Somebody's audio. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, know, I don't, you know, like. The non-binary thing, I don't know what that is. Now, as just because I'm an old fart, do you know what non-binary means, Steve? Flowing. It means uh, you're not a man or a no. woman. Huh? Right. I, I think they, uh, you know, you can be a man or a woman or nothing, you know? Non-binary. Is non-binary. It well, if you're binary. You're, you know, it means you're neither male nor female. Well, you are physiologically, well, then what the you don't fu- identify. What the fuck are you? See, there you go, Alex. That's what woke is. I mean, am I, wait a minute, hold on a second. Am I I just, you started it all. (laughs) Am am I such an old fart that I don't understand the concept of of somebody either not being a male or a female? Yes, you are that old. Yes. Yeah. 
What do they I, do? Cut their penis off the and sew up whatever is left? Now, I'm sure that you understand the concept. You're just pulling a Biden. No, I don't understand the concept. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of ma malarkey. <clears throat> yeah. Get your Victrola out. This is the most Bay Area people we've had because of Steve Brian, who just came on the show. Yeah, Here we got well, we have Ray, we have really? Brian, we have uh, we have Steve, we have Phil, we have uh, Alan. Yeah, and the rest of you are non-binary state yeah, people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just you know I mean I I just think that we've got to to begin with. I think it's getting to the point where the LGBTQ community. I think they just added another what? letter. Plus, 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 plus. Well, plus I think they're going to find seven, they're going to find that doesn't yeah. work since CNN Plus just closed down. You know, uh, these these are the aspects of wokeness that I that bug the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's being old fashioned. My feeling is, look, uh, I think we should just say what was the what was the genitalia you were born with, and we will assign that to you. You know. But no, you'd you can't. be called ignorant. I mean, yeah, it's ignorant. not that quite that simple anymore. Well, and plus, there are some people that have changed the, gen the genitalia they were born. To. Well, if they do, then you know, then it's legitimate. The, the biggest problem. The, is you know what I call a, a a transsexual, is someone who's just not committed. <laughs> ah, there you go. Kind of, it's and you notice now that the stuff. restrooms have uh, the choice of a male or female in the right. same restroom yeah. uh you know what do you do you go in there and you stand in i've the always room, been bothered by that for in. years i've been bothered by that though because if you're male you urinate in the sink so well i uh, years ago i <laughs> went to a movie that. theater and it was a break in the move for the after the movie and the line for the women's room went out yeah. the door and the guys yeah. were going in and urinating in cups you know in each other's hats whatever it took and got out of there and I often felt that actually, to begin with, women's rooms should be twice as large as the yeah. men's rooms. Yeah, they are. Right? They just don't tell us. No, they aren't. They aren't. They're the yeah. same. And and so consequently, uh, that always bothered that bothered me. And what bothered me is is that once I was somewhere and some woman came into the men's room. This was in the civic center. Came into the men's room to use the bathroom, and all these guys were staring at her. What are you doing in here? And she says. Uh, the women's room's taking too long, and I have to go. And I thought you should be able to go anywhere you want to go. Okay, I agree. there should be it's one a, thing that says restroom, and everybody goes in there. Well, that's what they in have Vegas. here most of the time. It's, I'm totally fine with it. What, what are we afraid of? Seeing a guy's penis, seeing well, a woman's there's, vagina. There's <laughs> Alan looks, but uh, you know, who, you know, look at that urinal over there. But, uh, you know, when you take in a little kid, a woman will bring in her child. Right. Uh, and oh, yeah. Kids got to go. Uh, oh, God. Let know. me tell you the worst. Like at the YMCA, yeah. when the guys before COVID, they would bring in their little like three, four, five, six year old girls. Mm -hmm. And you're walking around and it's like there's a girl like three inches from your dong. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Well, I you mean, know, seriously. the thing I'm is, kind of excited by that. But like, you know, they do have to go. That's the problem. <laughs> I mean, for, like she was like six inches away, and well, all of a sudden, here's my like here's, one my, inch here's away. my thinking. In every bathroom, we should have them huge. Anybody can use them and have nothing but stalls. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, nothing but stalls. No, that's that's correct. I think that would be right. Yeah, and that okay. would solve the problem. And then anybody yeah. can use the stalls. A woman comes in, a guy comes in, a little kid comes in, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, you but know. before COVID, I was doing a show at City College, and they were letting the the men use the women's restrooms because they were all like one gender restrooms, and the women's restrooms was so old, like the stalls were small, and pink, mm -hmm. and I I went to go take a, a poo poo in one of the stalls. A poo poo. A poo poo. <laughs> and <laughs> and my, and they're so small, my head was over the. Oh! I'm like uh -oh. sitting there on the toilet uh -oh. looking. <laughs> Careful. Oh. That's the perfect time for her to come in. <laughs> hey, we'll, 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 we'll change the subject, Brian. Don't wait worry. Minute, Ray, you so anyway, that. anyway, yeah, anyway, a she, it, wait a minute, hold on a second. Anyway, Winnie the Pooh uh, and Tigger uh, decided to go out for a walk one day. Is she gone? She knows, she knows take a dump. Hmm? Adrian, do you take a dump or do you leave a dump? 
<laughs> I've never do, you, do you notice what's yeah, happening in back of you? Do you notice what she's, she's on this cruise? Like you know, three, three ice creams and you know, four desserts. Sugar rush still from it it her intravenously. Yet. Really? Yeah, she's been hyper nonstop. I don't. She's gonna keep going. Yeah, she'll she'll be she'll be here for an hour doing that. I, I wish I had that kind of energy. Yeah, hey, I'll and, try it, Phil. We don't. Hey, I, I wish I, you I, had her hair. What's that? Let me deal with this. <laughs> I'm talking about toilets here. So yeah, really. And now a child, the first time on the internet, a child gets strangled to death. <laughs> uh, there goes your monetization. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> At least for so, today. So Ray, when you go in the women's bathroom, you're not supposed to, to look over. You're not supposed to stand on the toilet. You're supposed to sit on it. I was sitting there and I could see over the damn wall. Well, I never, I, like, I never go to the urinal anyway because I learned my lesson years ago and it was the price of fame. I was at a urinal one day. And this guy is next to me, and he looks over, and he says, you're Alex Bennett. And he turns and pees all over me. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, the, the Not only did you already know your own name, but you had to, like, get peed on to yeah, your own yeah. name. You know, it's, it's like when you got to piss real bad, and you get up close to the urinal, and you start to urinate, and it splashes back? Oof. No, that used to happen. And now, now it just it takes, so now you just hope slow. it reaches. Yeah, yeah. It takes about five minutes to get it to go. Uh, well, I, I, I one I, Roseanne one Roseanne show. It was Halloween, and she dressed up as a guy, and she laughed, and she she went into the men's bathroom, and she was peeing next to another guy. Well, she pretended she was peeing, and she's looking over, and the guy's like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> I love her. She's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so, you know, uh, God, we've had a good time tonight. This is fun. Yeah, it's been a great uh, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on more often, Steve. Yeah, Steve, you should make this a regular thing. In fact, you, want, right. you want a show? Uh, you can <laughs> have this Alex one. I ask you all the questions about black folk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm Indian. Is he black? He's Indian. I'm Indian. American Rude. Indian? Yeah. A Native American. Really? Oh, oh, you mean India? India? Wait a minute. As as yeah. as Albert used to say, my producer, who was not really what we would call woke. Okay, he, he would say, woke. "You're Indian. What kind? Dot head or woo woo?" Uh, well, I just did that, but uh, yeah. Oh, so you're Indian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you see, so you're. Why are you impersonating a black man? <laughs> You'll still get all the black questions. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to bank. I'm going to, it's been this way for all my life anyway. So, you know. Uh, well, racially. Asking, like, I got to yeah, go there next month. Ra racially, he's non-binary. There we go. <laughs> uh, and he oh, still boy. gets picked on by the police for being yeah. dark-skinned. Yes, bad. yes. Uh, Hey, uh, thank you uh, very much, Phil, for being here tonight. Yeah, white privilege. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, 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 of course, our, our good friend, um, um, uh, whatever his name is, Alan, uh, is here. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you. Josh, you didn't get to say anything tonight. Great note. <laughs> <laughs> he looks really upset about that. Yeah. No, he, he, no, no, he, he just, uh, okay. That's the way it is. Yep. Josh has got a good background. Yeah. Uh, 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 thanks to, uh, to Charlie Wallace, of course, as always. Are we getting closer to that millionth death? Uh, still 10,000 off. Oh. A little less well, come on, folks. Let's pick Kelly up Dale. the slack, okay? Have another Trump rally. Yeah, Je yeah. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much for being here tonight. You haven't said much either. Well, I I laughed a lot. Okay, that's good. It was, it was a great. Steve, thing. please call come back again, will you? Now that you know how to do it. I'm more than happy to. Yeah. Yeah. No, because I, great. you're really good to have on. Uh, I'm happy and, you don't charge. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to. Uh, uh, the lovely and attractive Ray Renati, and of course Brian. Thank you, and with a guest appearance by Adrian, your lovely <laughs> yeah. daughter, who 
quite frankly, have you bought a baseball bat for when she gets to be 15 and the guys come to the door to, for a day? Alan and Phil promised me shooting lessons. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> good. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll be, give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? All righty. Bye-bye. See you all later. Okay, there they go, folks. Uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be here taking your calls on, uh, on Skype. And uh, the uh, GabNet Live is the Skype address. All right? We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Goodbye. See you later.